Welcome to part two of the Hot Wire CNC Foam Cutter build. If you've missed part one, I'll put a link in the description so you can follow that, which is basically the introduction and what the series covers. So in this video, we're going to be covering the electronics. We're just going to get it mocked up on the bench with the motors connected and the uh, ramps board installed and the firmware uploaded and just make sure everything works there first before we move on to the mechanical side. Because if you have just ordered all your parts in, you want to make sure that's working first rather than say several weeks later or a couple of weeks later when you build the mechanical side and then find that there's something wrong with the electronics. So we'll go on to do that first and the first thing we need to do is uh, download the Arduino IDE. So if we just go to a browser and just type in Arduino IDE and that'll bring us to the Arduino website and all we need to do is go to download the Arduino IDE and download the installer for whatever operating system you're using. Now I'm using Windows on this uh, install because the actual control software will only run on Windows but to in upload the firmware you could use a, a Linux machine or even a, a Mac OS machine so uh, all we need to do is just download that and install it like you would any other application I've already got it installed on here so I won't go through it again so once we've got that then we need to get the firmware and I'll put a link on to the website So if we go on to, uh, where have we got downloads? Right down at the bottom there, file downloads. So once we've done that, we load up the Arduino IDE. What you would normally do then, we just go to open. And wherever you've got your firmware unzipped to. So I've got mine under the Google Drive here, down in uh, Gerbil 8C2 Mega 2560 ramps. And all we need to do is just double click on the INO file the one with the little icon and just to open and that will bring us up to here so what I like to do first of all is make sure that the firmware will compile so there's no errors in there before we try and upload it so all we need to do is that first thing is just check that we're on the right so this is the first time you do it you might not have any of these boards selected but the one we want is the Arduino uh, genuine mega or mega 2560 uh, we're not connected at the moment so the port option is greyed out and so all we do is just verify compile and hopefully if we've got no errors and then the little arrow at the top there once it's done will uh, go back to dimmed again There we are, and we just get the little message at the bottom. And if there's any errors, there'll be the little bit of sort of an orangey colour just there. So we know the firmware is okay, so we can go and upload it to the Arduino. So now that we've downloaded the firmware, compiled it, and verified that it works okay, what we need to do now is get the firmware onto the Mega 2650. So all we need to do is plug the Arduino Mega into the computer. Now I'm doing this on a Windows machine, but you can do this part of it on a Linux machine or a Mac machine. The IDE works on, on all of them. So what we'll do is we'll plug in. It's already plugged into the computer. And then on the computer you just need to check the lost my mouse and there it is 
So I've gone to tools. Just make sure we're still on the same board. The Arduino Omega 2650. And then check our port. So we're showing on port COM5 this time. We're looking good there. We've got COM5. If there was a problem, that wouldn't be highlighted. So all we need to do now is go to sketch and upload. And what the upload does, it will recompile it again and then it upload it to the Arduino. So off we go. So that looks good now. We've got no uh, error messages there. So now we've got the firmware onto the Arduino and that's working okay. So it's a good idea to do this stage first to make sure there's nothing wrong with the Arduino before you start plugging the ramps board in and any drivers so we know that side's working. So what we need to do after that, we need to plug the ramps board in and we need to put the drivers in and we also need to put in the the little jumpers so if we have a look so we need to be plugging in jumpers onto these two, first two pins so what we need to do is we put in jumpers on these pins here and that will set it to 8 stepping you can go down to 32 stepping but as you increase the stepping you lose some torque so as these are fairly small motors compared to the my other machine um, i'm gonna try it on eight stepping to see how that works but it probably won't be quite as smooth as 132 stepping but um we'll put it together and see see how it goes and we can always change it later if it's if it's a problem jumpers there so i think that's called ms0 and ms1 and then once we've got the jumpers on there we can put the driver in, also the heat sink, and that's just on some sticky back plastic, which we can put on there. Now the cooling fan I've got for this is probably a little bit oversized. Um, it's one I had laying around and um, I may use it, I may just order another one, but make sure you do use a cooling fan. These drivers here, these DRV, uh, 2855s can handle a bit more current than the uh, I think it's the A4988s and there are some other drivers now some even better drivers than these so we'll get we'll get them in so the firmware we're using on this ramps board was written by a guy in Brazil I'll put a link into his where he's got all the information on github and he's done a real good job on this and I have had a few email with him as well and uh, he says it's it works fairly well the way he's designed it is that the chips sit in that slot that slot that slot and that slot and all we need to do is make sure we get them lined up correctly so we've got the the en pin there and that lines up with the So we're going into that first one there, which I think is, let me just put that one in to get the distance. So it'll be that pin there. So it lines up with that, that pin there. And if you're getting old like me guys, you'll find this very useful. <laughs> Let's just put this on, make sure I'm getting it right. Tricky this not having the first one. So I'll gently push that in. Those pins lined up there, yeah. A little bit tight but it's gone in. Right, so then we'll just put the next one in.
Just double check that pin's in the same position. So when I've got them on, we'll come back to the next next section. Right guys, so now I've got the heat sinks and that on. What we need to do is just line it up with the mega. So line the pins at the back there with the pins there and just do it quite carefully. So there we are. It's hard to think that that little thing there is going to control the hot wire CNC machine when you can compare it to my old system. So the next stage is we need to connect up the stepper motors and the power supply. I've pre-wired the power supply. So that's just coming off the 12 volt power supply you saw earlier. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll get the motors connected up. So we've got these wires here that are gonna come off the different connectors. So you can, you can see there where it's got two, two A, uh, two B, one B and one A. That's where we plug on for the stepper motors. Now these, these wires here are not going to be long enough. When we get it all in we'll have some configuration to do because we'll need to get the steps correct so that when we tell it to move 10 millimetres it moves 10 millimetres and not three or four or you know, whatever. So the next stage is we'll get the stepper motors connected up. These are the couplers we'll be using. So uh, they connect onto the stepper motor that side and the other end is designed to fit on the 8mm uh, threaded rod we'll be using in the build. So we'll get that connected up, check that it works. Right, here we are guys, it's all wired up. I'm just about ready to apply some power. Hopefully we don't have any magic smoke. That's the power supply, the humming. So far, so good. So let's so one of the first things we have to do before we can go much further is set the current of these drivers here. And the way that's done is you use a, a voltmeter, a voltmeter, multimeter, set it on a two volt setting. And then you have to have it powered on and plugged into USB. It doesn't have, actually have to be connected to the control program. And then all you do is then put a small screwdriver connected to the positive and then on the black on your earth put that on your earth and then there's a little tiny trim pot there so on to the trim pot with the screwdriver and that actually measures measures the voltage so the way it works is the stepper motors have got 0.9 amps draw and what we do is then we use a voltage reference on here and the voltage reference is half of the value of the amps. So if that's 0 0.9, then we want point, uh, 0.45 volts. So let's, so I've been through and just done these to make sure they wasn't pulling too much. So we just go on the first one there. So that's 0.453. Four, 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 yeah, so they're within. The thing with stepper motors is you don't want to give them too much current. Right, so it's all working. 
so I think it seems to work reasonably well. So we'll connect. So you see some flashing we've got on the. So we're connected now. And what we can do just to check to see if things are working is just jog the uh, the left carriage and the right carriage, which we haven't got connected yet. We've just got the motors running. So it's set at 10 millimeters there. So if we do a hit the Y plus, we should see the Y. There we go. So that's moved 10 millimeters. And then if we do home X, Y, the X is already at zero, so that won't move. So if we just do home that, it will go back. So they all seem to work uh, quite well. So I jog both carriages, so if we do a down. So that all seems to work fairly well so far. And I haven't got the fan connected at the moment because there's no real heat on these yet because they're not under load. And I've been checking them just by putting my fingers on top and checking the motors and they're just very slightly warm. So that's looking good so far. So that's electronics are working. We can now move on to the mechanical build in part three. So that will be the next video. And so see you there, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.